is AI killing poker? Today, we are gonna cover bots, solvers, RTA, or real-time assistants. I'll go through what each of them are, the impacts they've had on poker, and the impacts that I see them having on poker in the future. I'm Phil Galfon, I've been playing poker professionally since about 2004. So I have seen the evolution of tools, which were quite primitive at the time, until this point where AI is, is the tool that rules them all. If AI and poker is new to you, I will give you the information you need to understand the latter parts of the video. But if it's not new to you, there's still plenty in this video for you, so stick around. Let's start with some definitions so that we know what we're talking about. First and foremost, what is a solver? A solver is a tool that will take inputs. What's the structure of the game? What are stack sizes? What bet sizes are we going to allow each player in this scenario to have? And it will run simulations, brute force simulations, to come up with the optimal strategy for that, what is effectively a toy game. Toy game means that it's not the full game of poker with every individual bet size and raise size, but it, it's something that approximates that. And it's gonna tell you exactly how to play that spot in an optimal sense. Now, this brings me to another definition, which is what is optimal play? The definition of game theory optimal play, at least the definition that I like to use because I think it makes the most sense, is a strategy which cannot be outperformed even if your opponent knows the strategy that you are executing. So I tell you, hey, we're here on the river, I'm gonna bet this amount with this part of my range, I'm gonna bet this amount with this part of my range, I'm gonna check this range, and when you bet, I'm gonna call with this and fold with this. And there's really nothing you can do about it. You can break even against my strategy, but that's the best you can do. The best quick example of um, a game with optimal strategy that's, that's pretty easy to execute is rock, paper, scissors. If I tell you that one third of the time I'm gonna throw rock, one third of the time I'm gonna throw scissors, and one third of the time I'm gonna throw paper, you can't beat my strategy you can only tie it. Now in rock, paper, scissors, I can't beat whatever you do either. However, in poker, when I'm executing an optimal strategy, some of your deviations from optimal will not cost you against me, but a lot of them will. And so when you're calling a hand against a, a flop bet that's just too weak, you're bleeding money to my strategy. So an optimal strategy in poker not only can't be beat, but it's going to beat almost all suboptimal strategies. Next, let's talk about what a bot is. A bot is a computer program that will take inputs from a poker table. So poker table, you know, deals cards and there's betting in front of you. It, it reads all of that information and then it executes a strategy and then it clicks a button to execute that strategy. So it's effectively playing poker instead of a human. So bots have been around long before solvers were invented. Bots in the olden days were programmed somewhat manually. They would be given a strategy of pre-flop hands to play and you know flop and turn bet sizes to make based on what your opponent does and which hands to continue with, et cetera, et cetera. So bots are nothing new. Obviously, when you combine today's advancements in AI with a bot, now that bot is strong enough to beat any human. In 2023, if you're not aware of this, bots can beat humans in every form of poker. That was not always the case. I remember back in, I wanna say, 2010, I was introduced to a team that was building a bot for the university bot competition. This is a, a common thing where university AI, computer science departments, have poker bot competitions between universities and see who can build the best heads up poker bot. In the old days, it was limit hold'em, now it's no limit hold'em. And I remember getting introduced to one of these. I've been introduced to a few, so I don't remember which team I was introduced to first, but I tested their bot back in 2009, 2010, and it was pretty good. It was I think a little bit worse than the best humans at that point, and mainly because it couldn't handle every bet size. And so after playing with it for a little while, I realized that if I just bet really small, like 10% pot, it treated that as if I was betting like 40% pot, and so it would fold way too much. Bots obviously are terrible for poker. I don't think I need to explain why that is. For now, let's get into what RTA is. RTA or real-time assistance is kind of the combination of a bot and a human. You could think of it as a cyborg. Essentially, there's a human being sitting at their computer playing poker. However, there is a bot that is reading what's happening on the table and spitting out the answer. And so if I'm playing with real-time assistance, it'll tell me exactly what to do on every street. But as a human, I'm clicking the buttons, I'm moving the mouse, I can be typing in chat, so I appear to be acting more like a human. I can also decide not to go with what it's telling me to, 
which if I'm an advanced poker player, I might want to do. So there's another form of RTA, which is manual RTA, where somebody has either a database of pre-solved solutions that are publicly available or privately available, uh, or they've, I guess it's the same or privately available, but they've just solved a game within Munker Solver or PO Solver, which are two of the main solving tools, and they're referencing this database of solutions manually. So there's no computer reading the action on the table and processing it. Their human eyes and brain are processing what happens. They go type it in and search for the hand that they have, and it tells them what to do, and then they go back to the table and they execute it. Now that we have those definitions out of the way, I want to talk about solvers and why solvers absolutely do not ruin poker. This is a common fear that now there are these machines that can tell people exactly how they're supposed to play, and therefore games are going to get too tough, players are going to be too good. No doubt solvers have progressed the game and the average skill level. However, tools that improve your play are nothing new. Back in 2005, I was a sit-and-go player. <laughs> the way our tool worked, where you would figure out if you could shove or fold a certain hand profitably, I would enter every stack size, at the table. And then for each player, I would enter, these are the hands that this opponent, I think, will call with. So if there are five players behind me, I would enter their calling ranges for all five players and enter the stack sizes for everybody and enter the payouts for the tournament. And then, you know, press go. And it'll tell you whether that hand's a profitable shove or not and, and how many big blinds it's making or losing. What I liked about that is I would I would study, I would go enter all of those things. I would click shove and be like, okay, this hand is a shove. And then I'd go a few pips down. Okay, jack eight suited is a shove. Is jack six suited a shove? Okay, no, it's not. Okay, what if instead of being in the hijack, I'm in the cutoff? Oh, now it becomes a, a much better shove. The benefit of doing this is that you learn which factors impact the value of your play the most. And so I actually, at that point, became very good at when I'm sitting at the table, especially playing a live tournament like WSOP, where there are a lot of players who are far from optimal in their calling ranges against a shove. I could very quickly approximate, okay, two players behind me, this guy in the big blind is a huge nit. He's not gonna call a 10 big blind shove even with ace 10, so uh, I can shove any two cards. So I actually appreciated that learning method. Obviously today, if I were playing sit and goes, I wouldn't use it because it's just very, very slow. And throughout the years, tools have progressed. There have always been trackers in, in, in the day and age that I've played. There have always been trackers where you could import your hands that you played online and it'll show you your stats it'll show you the stats of your opponents you know how often they're check raising flop etc cetera, etc cetera. there have always been tools that can improve the way that we play and they progressed over the years you know before solvers there were still improved icm tools independent chip model improved push fold and and reshove tools there were a lot of poker calculators i remember card runners ev was a really popular one it was basically a solver that you just put in every single node manually, kind of like I did there. But my example was just, there was one decision point for each player. Card Runner's EV, you could go through and figure out what everybody's going to do at each decision point. And then it's going to calculate what the highest EV line is. So solvers are just another tool to improve. And people are going to use them and they're going to get better. People have used them and they have gotten better. But the thing about solvers that's really, really important that you understand, the most important thing to understand is that solver strategies, unless you're playing eight big blind poker or 15 big blind heads up poker, solver strategies cannot be memorized. There are actually so many combinations of the way that the action can go, pre-flop, flop, turn, river, and the order that the cards can come out, that there's just no way, there's no way to even study them all. Uh, there are too many. And even if you could study them all, there is no way to retain all of that because the strategies are so complex, especially when you're using solvers that have five bet sizes. Um, you just can't execute it. You can't come close to executing it. And so, yes, it has improved the way that we play. It's taught us about bet sizes that we were never using, and we realize now the, the merits behind them. But nobody is playing anywhere close to perfectly. Nobody's close. So solvers, will AI tools like solvers and solver-based tools ruin poker? In my opinion, absolutely not. And they're not at risk of making people unbeatable because humans are just too limited in our capacity to process information and retain it. Next up, bots and RTA. Obviously, these are both bad for poker. There's no argument that I've ever heard that RTA is good for poker, that bots are good for poker. Bots are a lot less of a risk for poker than RTA, which to some might be unintuitive. RTA needs a human clicking the buttons, whereas 
a bot can just be run a thousand times. There could be a thousand bots deployed without much computing power on a certain site. And, and while that is kind of true, bots exhibit a lot more of the behaviors that are easier for poker sites to catch, not only with the way that they move the mouse or don't move the mouse, the timings at which they do certain things. More importantly, because of the economics of it, you know, a team of developers spends a long time building a bot. They're not just going to have it play one account at mid stakes. They're going to, usually what happens is there are these bot rings where they deploy countless accounts. And these accounts get caught because first of all, there are a whole bunch of players with almost identical stats. And over time, they are identical stats. Second of all, these players each need accounts that have identities and banks and payment information and often the payment information and, and these kind of irregularities in this sense are, are what get them caught. If we're looking at regulated sites versus unregulated sites, which do you think would catch more bot rings and why? Regulated sites tend to catch a lot more bot rings, which I'm imagining is what a lot of you guessed. However, it's not for the reason that most people assume. Most people assume because regulated sites have regulatory bodies that have a game integrity department to investigate things like this, they're going to do so, whereas unregulated sites who are not forced to do that aren't going to do that. That's not necessarily the case. The problem that unregulated sites run into is oftentimes the reason they're unregulated is because it's a business decision. Unregulated sites can take deposits without requesting your ID. You can open multiple accounts because there's no name and identity associated with it. You can deposit in Bitcoin. You can deposit in a bunch of random methods. Whereas when you're playing on a regulated site, um, they need your utility bill. They need your ID. Um, they need you know a bank account or credit card that's tied to you. So bot rings have a lot more trouble on these regulated sites because they need all of these real identities and they need to prove that all of these real identities have enough money to be gambling the amount that these bots are. Now, RTA does sometimes run into the same problems. If you want to build this cheating software and have a lot of people use it, then you know these people have to have identities as well and they're going to end up playing very similarly. The reason RTA is harder to catch um, is not so much because of the mouse movements and things like that and because humans can chat. It's because humans can go off script. You know, The RTA is popping up, hey, raise the turn, and they think to themselves, well, I know this player and this player has a good hand almost always, so I'm not raising the turn. And then they just won't. And what happens is if they do that enough, their stats fall far enough off of optimal that they're not as easy to detect. And what this implies, which is what I was going to get to soon enough anyways, is that one of the major ways that bots and RTAs get detected are through stat analysis. Now in the past, this stat analysis was done manually or semi-manually. And what I mean by that is as a poker site, you would look at the stats of all of your players and you would compare players that were the most similar, and then you would run their hands through a solver and see how often they're getting things right. Now the semi-manual way, which is much more automated than that, is in your back office of your poker site software, you have automated checks where if players meet certain groups of criteria, they're flagged, and then you can look into them further. And so these criteria might be certain accounts are always playing with each other. So maybe there's some collusion or card sharing, whether it's a bot or not. Or these players are all um, hitting stats that uh, in certain spots that are very hard to hit based on the average you know, players that, that play uh, if they're not using uh, some kind of cheating software. However, now today, and certainly in the future, Sites are using AI to catch AI. Now, one of the other things that I think people don't think about that makes detecting cheaters a little bit easier is that most poker players on a site don't win. Depending on how popular a poker site and how many casual players play, probably between 75 to 90% of accounts lose. And so over a long sample, you don't really have to investigate the losing accounts because if they're cheating, they're doing a pretty bad job of it. Um, and they're not really they're not really hurting your site. So it, it narrows the field down quite a bit. So you look at the accounts that are winning, you match them to other accounts, et cetera, et cetera. This is the very um, wide angle view of how bots and RTAs are detected. There are other ways. Some sites are rumored to have um, to take screenshots of your screen while you're playing, and so they can see uh, whether there's a like something telling you what to do. Some sites are rumored to check the processes running on your computer, or actually that's confirmed. You can also check the programs that are downloaded to your computer. The main one and the one that I think will have the most longevity is AI detecting AI. If you've been watching to this point, 
it probably sounds uh, pretty grim for online poker. And that's the perception of a lot of people who are not serious online poker players. But the fact of the matter is these bots, they exist for sure, but they're not a large percentage of the players. They're a tiny percentage of the players and they get caught quite often. A common misconception is that most bots are caught by poker players who are doing stat analysis and then they kind of expose these bots. Now, poker players exposed the super user accounts at Ultimate Bet and Absolute Poker. And the reason the sites didn't catch those is because the sites were kind of behind it. And Poker players have caught other bots through stat analysis, absolutely. But I'm not gonna know it off the top of my head, but I know PokerStars, for example, who has an excellent game integrity department, the number of bots that are caught and brought to them by players um, compared to the, the number that they catch on their own without any players noticing and bringing it to their attention is something like uh, three to 7%. I think, I think it's under 5%. And the fact that they're getting caught by the sites before the players who, well, the players are pretty serious about trying to sniff this out, um, lets you know that they're doing a pretty good job. Basically, across all sites, winning players are winning. Uh, honest players, I should give the caveat. That in of itself tells you that the games are beatable, that bots are not destroying online poker because there are people still making a good living. Are they a bad thing? Absolutely. Are they going to get worse? I'm actually cautiously optimistic. The strategy that bots use at the table is about as good as it's going to get. If we look at cash game bots and we, we look at the scale of you know what cash game bots were 15 years ago to now, I think they're about 95% as good as they're ever going to get at playing poker. Now, what bots could get better at is avoiding detection. But the tricky thing that bot makers and RTA users are up against is that you kind of have to play well. You, you, if you look at a strategy that a bot is giving you and you simply don't do it very often, well, now you're, you're not executing the right strategy because optimal strategy is optimal strategy. It's always gonna look like optimal strategy. The progression of AI on the detection side will just continue getting better. And this strategy, which is gonna stay somewhat static. I think the AI is going to get better and better at catching them. Now, what I also hope happens is cooperation between online poker sites and poker venues. We've seen some of this with GG Poker, banning Ali Mshirovich and Jake Schindler, along with a few others. And then those players subsequently getting banned by the WSOP, by PokerGo. This is the kind of incentive or disincentive that you need to provide. You need sites to work together, not only to help catch people, but to make the punishment severe enough that it deters people from trying this. So as an industry, with more sites banding together with the progression of AI detection for AI bots and RTA, uh, I am optimistic about where things can go. Now, what can you do as a, an individual player to protect yourself? The answer is it's not quite clear. And unfortunately, you are somewhat reliant on the poker sites that you're playing on. As I mentioned earlier, regulated poker sites, especially the biggest ones, are safer. Not only because they have the larger game integrity teams, but because they require documentation for every player that plays on their site. The easier it is for you to get money on a site, the easier it is for bots to play on that site for that reason. The other thing I'd say is, you know, in the olden days, when you were playing in a game and it kind of seemed like you, you didn't think people were playing that well, but you just kept losing, it doesn't mean you were cheated, but it does mean, oh, maybe I'm wrong about this. Maybe I shouldn't play in this game anymore. Maybe I should move down or maybe I should go play on a different site uh, or a different venue, whatever the case may be. I would say still do that. Now today, you can look at your opponent's play and be like, that's actually bad. That's actually bad. And you can look in your database and say, well, I've run, you know, 50 buy-ins below all in EV. So it's obvious that I'm just getting unlucky. The problem is if there's a bot ring, they're often gonna be sharing whole cards or even not a bot ring, but collusion. And they can be sharing whole cards. So in a, especially in a game like PLO, where there is a lot of whole card information to share, you might not actually have been unlucky. You might've been cheated because they might've known that instead of having 13 outs, you only had eight outs. I would say just as a general rule, if you find yourself losing in a game for a while, just look somewhere else to play. Um, even if you can't quite make sense of it. And what will happen here is sometimes you'll end up quitting a game that is good. But 
you'd be doing so for another game that is maybe almost as good or, or you know, maybe as good or better. So it's not like you're losing that much, but some of the time you're gonna be quitting a game that's cheated. Furthermore, if you're playing in a game and you keep losing and you can't figure out why, even if you're not getting cheated, even if the game is beatable, that's gonna affect you psychologically. You're gonna play worse in this game, you're gonna play more fearfully, you're, you're gonna doubt yourself. And so getting out of that situation um, is kind of just a, a win-win, whether you're getting cheated or not. I wouldn't say jump around accusing all of these games of being cheated because you're losing for a long period of time. Don't do that, just move on. You'll never know, maybe, whether there was cheating going on or not. Usually there won't be, but just move on and play somewhere else. And that's a way to kind of ensure that you are protecting yourself for those kind of edge case scenarios. Hopefully you found that helpful and you all will stay safe out there. If you were interested at the top of this video in the conversation about toy games, I have another video that I created a while ago where I covered a different toy game uh, that was gonna take a little too long for this video that'll show up right here. If you found this helpful, go ahead and click subscribe. I cover videos uh, like this about the poker industry. I talk about poker strategy and really everything in between. If that interests you, I have a lot more videos for you in the past and in the future. I will see you in one of them. Take care.